Hello and welcome again. We will start with an introduction to digital signatures. So we talk about very general ideas in this video about what digital signatures are and why they are important and why we also need them. So, so digital signatures are actually an analog of, analog of written signatures in the digital world. So it's something that you imagine is going to happen. So we have to sign something to prove uh, that we actually did create that signature or to validate uh, that document. So when, for example, you sign a, a contract, so when you sign it, actually, you are saying that you agree with that and then you are the one who's going to perform certain activities by that contract. So that's kind of the general idea here of what a digital signature will be. Uh, and in this case, it will be a digital or the electronic signature. And we'll talk about more about what that means in detail later. But in this video, we're just going to talk about it by the general ideas only. So, um, digital signatures are fundamental in cryptography, and there are several reasons for that. Three of the main reasons is authentication, which is, you can think about it as an analog of signing a contract, which I just mentioned there. So you actually say that you're going to do that, and then it um, the contract if it has your signature, then it proves that you actually agree on those kinds of things. Uh, the second one is authorization, which is the analog of sending your checks to cash at the bank. So you are, when you sign your check, so that it proves that it's actually you who actually went there to cash that check. So that's kind of like an authorization. And probably the ones that is more important here for cryptography is non-repudiation. And I think we talked about this a while ago, but let's recall what that is. So this is an analog of signing a letter you sent to someone. In the sense that you, the non-repudiation means that you cannot deny up to a certain point that you were the one who sent that message. And this is very important in cryptography because it, it prevents people from uh, cheating, basically. Okay, so let's talk about why we need digital signatures. So some of some of the reasons that uh, I just mentioned there are that are important, but let's go into more specifics. So what we have done so far, uh, basically throughout the course, is just a couple of things. So one is encrypt data or text. So at the beginning of the class, we were encrypting text only using Caesar ciphers and other kind of permutation ciphers and substitution ciphers and all of those things and the more advanced ones are the data encryption like uh, the advanced encryption, encryption standard uh, triple DS, RSA, El Gamal and all of the other ones. So that's for encryption. Um, uh, one of the things that we talked about was the Diffie-Hillman key exchange that it is used to share a key over an insecure channel so you can use that key with an SM, um a symmetric cipher, which in this case uh, will be uh, the advanced inscription standard or the triple DS. So that's a couple of things. Now, uh, even though those things are really important, uh, this is not enough in terms of, of security. And what I just mentioned earlier is it doesn't prevent that this couple of things uh, cheating from Alice and Bob. And what that means is, is this couple of um, this idea. Whenever we talk about security, we are always assuming that there is an outside party that is the one who's trying to basically do harm or cheat uh, or fake messages. But in many cases, uh, you also have to prevent cheating from both Alice and Bob. So they could actually be the actual attacker. So one of the things that we're going to talk about is what if one of them tries to say that the other one didn't send that message. How do you prove that that is actually true? So that's the that's the idea. So I want to give you a motivating example. Of course, this example here is not actually a real life example. It's just a motivation here, which might kind of happen in some situations. So the motivated example is like this. So suppose Alice has an online store for high-end watches, so some very expensive watches, let's say. So she has an online store, she has a way to display the watches, and some of the watches are very expensive, some others might not be. And uh, we assume that Bob, which is the the customer, wants to purchase some watch that he 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 liked, something. So 
he wishes to buy a watch that costs $152,000. So there are watches that are that expensive. Uh, of course, because Alice wants to sell those watches because they are, they are that expensive, they are very difficult to sell. So she really wants to make the, the sell. She doesn't want to uh, have those things returned to her because it's very difficult to, to sell those watches. So that's the general idea. So something like this, some kind of watch like this, the Millage Flying Turbulion Collection. It doesn't matter what the name it is, it's just some watch that is very expensive. So let's say uh, they want to do a transaction through the internet. So uh, Bob wants to send the form, the purchase form with his information, let's say his name, address, credit card number, all those kinds of things. And of course, it ha he has to send that security through to the internet, which is an insecure channel. So they, they have to uh, apply, uh, encrypt, or Bob has to encrypt that message. So the first thing that they have to do is, they have to decide on, first of all, what kind of encryption they're gonna use, and second, and they have to use, in this case, it would be much better to do, to do symmetric cryptography because it's a little bit faster. So to do symmetric cryptography, they have to agree on a key, and the way to do it, remember, we talked about this in the class, is, the Diffie Hillman key exchange, which is a way to securely share a key. That's one way to do it. So let's assume that Alice and Bob first are gonna agree on a share key, and they're gonna use a symmetric uh, algorithm, like for example, the advanced encryption standard. Again, this is just an example. So they do the Diffie Hillman key exchange, remember that go, going back and forward, doing those operations and all that. If you want, you can go ahead and uh, double uh, double check those those videos. I'm gonna put a link in the video description for the Diffie Hillman key exchange, so you can remember what that is. All right, so so this is the situation here. So this is all go going through the internet. So Bob is here, Alice, and they already share the key. So they have the key already. So this is after the Diffie Hillman key exchange. So Bob wants to send the order form, which is going to be uh, AES encrypted, so using the advanced encryption standard to Alice. So what Bob does is he applies the advanced encryption standard using the uh, key K here. So he sends the message which is encrypted to the insecure channel, and then Ali gets the message, which is the form, the purchase form. And now because she has the key, which was already shared using the Diffie Hillman key exchange, she can actually uh, see this information here, which has some sen sensitive information, like for example, Bob's credit card information. So what Alice does is Alice does decrypt the form using the advanced encryption standard, which is something that they agree on, using the key that they both shared. They only share that key, only Bob and Alice share that key. Now, this is where the problem happens where digital signatures are needed. Now let's suppose for a second here that Bob changes his mind and decides that spending that much money, $152,000 on a watch is, is too much. And then he does that after he sends the, uh, the encrypted form. So one thing that he, Bob can do, uh, do a little bit of cheating, is he decides that to lie and just say sim simply that he actually never sent that that order, he never placed the order, he never sent through the insecure channel, never sent that order that is all being faked by Alice. Which is entirely possible because Alice could easily fake this information. For example, if, if for example, Bob purchased something earlier from that store, so she will have his information already on file and he can, she can create a fake form because she has the key, so she can easily create a form and fake an encrypted form. She cannot prove easily what was Bob the one who sent it. So let's go into more details of that. So assuming that Bob decides to lie, so then let's say Alice, because she doesn't want to lose the purchase, it's too much money to, to lose, it's very difficult to uh, sell that watch because it's too expensive. So Alice decides to sue Bob uh, because she wants to just get that money. So then, what happens here, well, Alice sues, sues uh, Bob, and they go to a judge, and then the judge has to look at the evidence. But what is the evidence that the judge, the judge has? Uh, Bob is saying that he, he didn't 
uh, sent the form he never encrypted and Alice says that he did but Alice has no way of proving that because uh, Bob can say well Alice has the same information that I have which is actually true they share the key okay they both can produce that form there is no way of identifying which person either Alice or Bob was the one who produced that actual form because Alice remember from previous purchases has the Bob personal information and on top of that she has the share key so the judge cannot decide uh, which is the one who's telling the truth so in most cases if you think about this for example in the United States what will probably happen is that Bob will get away with that because there's no way that Alice can prove the purchase so Bob will return the watch and then Alice will lose the the, the sale which is a lot of money so and that's what I'm basically saying here since Alice and Bob have this chair key they both can encrypt and decrypt messages so they actually have the same power they have the same information they have the chair key so they can fake uh, or they can produce the same encryption decryptions so that just has no way to decide as I just already mentioned who generated the form so Bob can say that Alice generated the a fake form and then he can get away with that which is pretty bad for Alice so in this case the attacker is not even Eve the attacker in this case you can say that is Bob that is cheating okay there are many situations where it, um, there is important to prove that an um, neutral to a neutral party who generated a message for example that example there which might not be very realistic but there are situations in which you want to prove to someone that you that somebody generated that improve here means that there is in a specific without doubt way way to check that was the person who created the mess of course up to some point not in this hundred percent uh proof so uh i wanted to go into general idea but i think this uh, video has gone a little bit too long so this is the idea of digital signatures so we want to have an analog of signatures uh, in the digital world the same as we have it in real life for signatures to prove that somebody actually sent that message so in this case for example if Alice um, had Bob's signature in some sort of send some sort of digital signature which is kind of he can sign on the phone but let's suppose he didn't sign anything um, handwriting in that case if she has some kind of digital signature uh, proving that Bob was the one who sent that message then Bob cannot, cannot cheat it's similar for Alice Alice cannot cheat Alice cannot pretend that in fact Bob purchased something when he didn't so this is the idea of digital signature so in the next videos we'll go a little bit more detail um, what is the structure of digital signatures how are they thought of and what are the different types of digital signatures out uh, there are at least some of them so I'll stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.